For those of you that made it to Unit 6, congratulations. Uh, and I've got some good news for you. Unit 6 starts off with some stuff that's relatively straightforward, I think. Um, uh, and then and then it gets into some stuff. Unit 6 goes into th some things that are more complicated, but really, really cool. Um, so uh, the, uh, the, the simple stuff is something called groups. Um, groups uh, just let you put together shapes that you learned about before. So if we go into 6.11, um, you'll see uh, that here's here's some code they give you where they they create a circle as a variable called C and a star as a variable called S and then they they use on mouse move to let you move uh, the circle and the star around. Well, then their next example is what if we could combine that circle and that star into one variable and call it G? It's a group. Um, and then we can do G dot center X equals mouse X and G dot center Y uh, equals mouse Y. And, uh, and we can use on mouse move to do the same thing we just did. Yay! Now, uh, you're probably not that excited that you can put two shapes together, but imagine if you had the ability to put a lot of shapes together, like a circle and a bunch of stars. Um, or something that I just helped some folks with, uh, some people were asking me about for their creative task, uh, wh uh, whether they wanted to make a maze. And they didn't know how to make a maze where they could detect whether you bumped into a wall when they drew all the walls with lines well if you put all the lines in one group then you can detect whether you hit that entire group as though you were detecting any other shape anyways let's take a look at when we have a lot of shapes together in one group and we move that group around by changing the g dot center x and g dot by changing the center x and center y it just so happens that the group variable is g so that's why we use g here um, if your group variable is uh, uh, I, uh, what is it uh, car um, then you will do car dot center x if your group dot variable is uh, moon then you will do moon dot center x anyways let's go ahead and hit run and now uh, uh, I'm moving all these things around, but all I'm really doing is writing code to move G around and all of these shapes move with. So that's pretty quick and straightforward. Um, let's take a quick look. Um, I'm going to skip over the next two just for a second to give you a, a preview of things to come. The really cool stuff is in 6.3 where you begin to learn about step events in motion. And this is where we can begin to write code that does genuine animation. So welcome to Pixar. Um, anyways, let's go back for a second. Let's see if there's anything else I can tell you real quick since it's, I'm only three minutes in. Um, group properties. Um, group properties, again, there's nothing really new here. Um, you, you've got the same set of properties that we had for all the other shapes. Um, so you've got center X, center Y, you've got right, uh, uh, and uh, let's see here, non-positional, you've got opacity, you've got fill, you've got rotate angle. Um, and one thing that is new is something called children. Um, and uh, the children property is something that I, I can't remember whether we, uh, well, hmm, let me, ta let me think about this for a sec. Okay, in unit six, uh, what you can do with the children of a group is relatively straightforward. And all that is, is that you can have, uh, wait, hold on, hold your horses. All right, I think I got my head together. So, uh, so in unit six, the the idea of having children of a um, of a group just means that you can take a variable and you can define the variable to be a shape. Um, in this case, they have <clears throat> a star, and the variable name is inner star, and uh, you can make that variable part of the group. Um, and, and so that variable is then considered to be a child of the group. Uh, and, uh, and the interesting thing is, is because the variable was defined outside the group, you can still address that particular variable uh, by itself, but it's still whatever it, it, when it's part of a group, even though you're changing just that one variable, that one child, um, it still uh, updates how it looks in the group. Let's take a quick look. 
So uh, let's see here. So here it says uh, when we press a key, the star will have uh, 12 points. Um, so I guess there's nothing else for me to do. I'll, I'm about to press a key. Here I go. Um, three, two, one, boom. So that little red guy in the middle just changed from uh, an inner star with uh, five points to an inner star with 12 points, even though it was part of a group. Now, when we get to in future units, um, when we learn about looping, there's some really cool stuff you can do with children of groups, uh, and uh, it makes it so that you can you can actually uh, go through and, and a loop and and address all the individual items of a group uh, individually, and in in understanding that each one each each member of a group is known as a child will be helpful at that time. Okay, so uh, let's see if there's anything else. Sorry I took so long to talk about that. Um, group methods is really cool, and you're going to love this. Um, let's see here. So shape methods. So uh, so you can use all the methods that you could use before, uh, that you could use with shapes. Um, you can take a group, and you can send it to the front or to the back. Uh, what else? You can check to see if a, a group hits another shape or if another shape hits a group. Um, and uh, what else? Now here's something that's new that you can do with a group that you could not do with other shapes. Is you can, you can after you create a group, like up here, look at line 5. Here uh, we created kind of a group template or a blank group uh, called G. G is the name of the variable. Um, and again, that could be called moon or, or earth or house or car or whatever, horse, whatever you want it to be. They just called it G. Um, and then um, uh, what you can do is you can uh, separately, after you create the group, you can add as many new shapes to the group as you would like. That's kind of cool. So what that means is, is that uh, not only can you create a group with shapes, but you can add additional shapes to a group anytime you want. That's going to be pretty cool as we move on from here. So anyways, here's an example of it. Um, it looks like on mouse press, we will add additional circles to our group. And then uh, when we press a right and a left key, we'll move the whole group to the left and right. So I'll go ahead and run it. So let's see here. So we, I'll press the mouse key and then I'll, uh, oh, and I'll press again. Oh, I'll press again and again and again and again. All of those guys should be a member of the group according to this code. Every time I press the mouse, I added a circle to my shape. So now when I go and I hit the right key, um, I should move all those shapes at the same time because they're all members of the same group. And when I hit the left key, they should all move at the same time. And that's because I, all I have to do is write my code to change center X for the entire group. All right, what else? Uh, oh, you can clear an entire group all at once. Um, and uh, I'm not absolutely sure whether, whether we'll need that or when we'll need it, but good to know we can. Um, also, there is a group remove command. Uh, and uh, let's see how that works. So, oh, so you can specify if you have a particular, if you have a, a child in a group that is a variable, um, what you can do is you can actually choose to remove that one specific guy from a group. So you can add members to a group, you can add children to a group, and you can remove them. What else? Uh, App.group. Oh, the all of the every shape that appears on, on a canvas is automatically part of something called app.group. So if you ever want to get rid of the entire, uh, every shape on the screen, like let's say you're making a game and you want to make a new level, um, you can go and you can apply group. You can apply this dot clear function to app.group. And the way you would do it is it shows here app.group.clear. Uh, what else? I think that's it. So I believe that is it for 6.11, uh, 6.12, and 6.21. That's just a quick overview. Um, and uh, I'll give you a separate overview for, for uh, step events in motion. And of course, I'll give you some videos with hints and tips on some of the individual exercises. Anyways, I hope that gives you a good idea of what you're getting into for Unit 6.